Okita Alter, Majin Saber. An idea so cool they had to retcon her story to fit in Fate Grand Order. Originally, she was a fusion of Okita and Nobunaga and such a badass that to stop her, they needed help from Kantai Collection's Nagato. Alright, now I have to read this. Despite a lot of initial hype, a chatter about Okitan has died down, save for her most dedicated fans. So what happened? Okitan is, at her core, a one-dimensional beat stick. She loads up on stats, NPs once, and calls it a day. Maybe trades face cards if your damage is enough to snuff. It's a very old-school sort of loadout, like the buffed version of a Year 1 kit. The first skill we have is Kyokuchi. It's a three-turn buster and quick buff. Functional, but nothing super interesting. Next is Persistence. Currently, this is an NP charge skill that absorbs stars. The battery caps at 30%, which is something, but not necessarily what you want to see from a 5-star buster attacker. With the rerun of Good Good Final Anoji, aka not this one, aka not actually the final one, it'll get an upgrade that adds a 3-hit attack buff. It's a nice gesture, but truth be told, I'd much rather have seen another 20% on her battery. Third is Boundless, a one-turn NP damage buff that also gives a one-hit evasion. Between these skills, you can hit all three buff categories for a nice multiplicative bonus on your Noble Phantasm. Speaking of which, Zeken Mukyu Sundan is an AoE buster attack that has buster resistance reduction tied to overcharge. Seven hits, which would be outstanding on anything that isn't a buster Noble Phantasm. This is where her problems start. In an Okita-centric team, you're going to struggle to NP multiple times in that three-turn window, and keep in mind that Boundless is only up for one of them. You can pair her with a single-target attacker to follow up, but for fights where you could do this, you'd be compromising on survivability to make it work. Keep in mind, Okitan has a one-hit evade as her only form of protection, so your margin for error is quite slim. Realistically, you'd be running her in a three-attacker buster farm team, or in a babysitting team with crit support casters, Merlin, Waver, Hans. Okitan herself doesn't have much in the way of crit tools, but you get a few stars and her absorption buff gives her some consistency. What you're really leveraging in this setup is her very high base attack. It's the second highest among Alter Egos after King Protea. Nice, but you have to keep in mind that Alter Egos only get 50% extra damage against four Horseman classes, as opposed to the full 100% from true class advantage. This means that you're incentivized to run her against mixed four horsemen encounters, but penalized against monocultures. You can see this the most in caster fights, because the pool of free-to-play riders is actually quite strong. Logistically, Okitan does have quite a few upsides. For cheap players especially, her self-contained suite of buffs means that you don't need esoteric or expensive servant combinations to use her. Waver and Merlin are still regular fixtures on a lot of support lists, and you don't need doubles to make it work. As an alter ego, scaling her up is extremely convenient, mostly requiring gems. Even new players could probably grind her to 8s across the board with the right monthly tickets. Because of her buff combination, you have a lot of freedom to pick your CE. I'd say the only hard requirement is starting charge. 50% CEs like Aerial Drive, Golden Sumo, and Holy Knight Supper pair with supports like Waver and Merlin to get an immediate Noble Phantasm. Kaleidoscope and Max Limit Broken Imaginary Element let her NP without external support. For command codes, I'd focus on utility and crit buffs. Armament of Victory gives Star Absorption, Holy Knight's Aurora gives Flat Stars, Mistress of the Heaven increases Buster Crit Damage, Magus of Flowers gives Flat Charge, and Majin San buffs both Star Absorption and Crit Damage. That last one isn't coming until Good Good 6, so you'll have to wait a while to put an Okitan command code on Okitan. Overall, Okita Alter is simple to a fault. She's a bit like the Altera of Alter Egos, except Altera was a Year 1 Servant. They both have a lot of power budgeted into their raw attack stat, and this comes at a price in terms of longevity and utility. But Altera at least gets some cool utility down the road. I can't say the same for Okitan. Now, raw damage does count for something, it's just that you're paying a high cost for it. At low NP levels, you're gonna feel your limitations quite acutely on account of the Alter Eco Class Advantage modifier. But now you're in the position of rolling multiple copies of a limited 5-star Servant. Despite my talk earlier about how Okitan is self-sufficient and easy to raise, this is a big obstacle in me recommending her for low-budget players. It's a bridge too far. No, it's not just a bridge too far, it's a couple of bridges too far after Fujino had her way with them. Okay, so that leaves the whales. But for them, Okitan is also a tough sell. Despite her strategic versatility, she's tactically constrained. You really have the one style of play and that's it. Unfortunately, she's building into something of an evolutionary dead end. The value of AoE Buster Attackers is at an all-time low, and with a few notable exceptions, it's only gonna get worse. Compare her with the high-end AoE Buster Attackers on JP. You have the ones that change their NP to something that isn't Buster, one that does apocalyptic amounts of damage, and Saber. 
That last one is a pretty good barometer for power creep in FGO, because Delightworks will throw her a bone every now and then to keep her relevant. Self-charge, star dump, and P upgrade, and the ability to change her entire deck to buster cards. Unless they had unique utility, this is the kind of power we'd have to see for Okitun to become truly high-end again. Then again, a quick NP would have been a huge game-changer. It wouldn't surprise me if in a year or two, she gets an Amia-style NP conversion buff. Tragically, being an effective Buster Farmer doesn't just mean not performing the shit soup that we call the Assassin class. Okitan is competing for bench real estate with Berserkers, and that's a hard knock life. Doubly so, because there's an absolutely insane Berserker around the corner. So at the end of the day, I can only recommend her to hardcore Oki friends, and trust me, they don't need my recommendation as an excuse to do what they're gonna do anyway. Ah, time's a cruel mistress, isn't it? One minute you're up, the next you're trading dumpster diving tips with Altera until she gets her life together and you're stuck by her lonesome. Thanks for watching. Like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more, and come watch me on Twitch where I stream every weekend. 3 p.m. Pacific Time, Friday through Sunday. See you there.